Hello, welcome to Meet Your District Supervisor. I'm Nona Melkonian, and we're here with Supervisor Katie Tang from District 4, which includes the Central and Outer Sunset and Parkside neighborhoods. Supervisor Tang was appointed by Mayor Ed Lee to serve on the Board of Supervisors as a District 4 representative in February of 2013, replacing previous Supervisor Carmen Chu after she was appointed as Assessor Recorder that same month. Before her appointment, she served as legislative aide to Supervisor Chu. Today we'll get to know her and discuss the tough issues facing the city. Welcome, Supervisor. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let's start with a little about your background, where you grew up, went to school, and the kind of jobs you've had in the past. Sure. So I grew up in the Sunset District and uh, still live there. I um, spent about 20 years living in the Sunset District and just am so proud to be able to represent the district that I grew up in and where my parents still live. Uh, I had gone through the public education system uh, and went to neighborhood schools um, throughout the Sunset District. So um, had gone to Francis Scott Key Elementary School, Hoover Middle School, Lowell High School, and um, I'm just so proud to be able to um, come back full circle to support a lot of those, uh, those schools that I went to and uh, be part of that community in a very um, integral way. So you spent most of your life in San Francisco. Why did you choose to live in the city? Well, I, first of all, my parents uh, decided to move us to the Sunset District because uh, they really wanted my brother and I to have a really good and safe environment growing up. Uh, there are a lot of children and families uh, in the Sunset District, and I think that they felt like it would be the best environment for us to grow up. So uh, we ended up staying out there and uh, fell in love with it and have a lot of pride after especially working for the Sunset District as the legislative aide for Supervisor Chu um, for over five years and uh, working with very intimately with a lot of the community members, um, the merchants, our um, local residents who have um, you know, interest in you know, things such as public safety or public transportation, our school communities, our parks and, and playgrounds. Um, just really been such a wonderful experience working with them and so um, I've, I've just really enjoyed that work experience as well as my own experience growing up there. How has your experience as aide to Supervisor Chu prepared you for the Board of Supervisors? I think that I probably don't have as high of a learning curve um, having worked in the district for so long and also having grown up there. Um, I think that it's been really beneficial knowing um, who to go to to ask certain questions or um, you know, knowing how to read pieces of legislation, for example, um, knowing what the issues are um, that the city has uh, faced. I think that those have all been really helpful um, experiences during this transition. What motivated you to get involved in politics? I've always wanted to be involved in whichever community I'm in. Uh, for example, when I was in school, I was in student government. Um, and so uh, working in, in City Hall uh, was one of my first jobs actually out of college. And so uh, I have been doing, I have been working at City Hall for actually over six years now. And uh, just feel very much pride in, in working for the city that I live in. Where do you place yourself on the political spectrum? Are you progressive, centrist, or more on the conservative side? I think I'm probably more of a moderate person. Um, I think that uh, our district, again, um, lots of families and children, um, seniors, uh, immigrant community, and I think that uh, we tend to be more classified as, you know, fiscally responsible, I would say. And again, having um, my experience in working for the mayor's budget office, for example, uh, prior to working for the Board of Supervisors, I think that gave me a really great background in terms of how the city works, how the city's budget is put together, and those really, um, that experience has really influenced uh, my decision-making process. And speaking of the city's budget, the city just enacted a two-year budget, and it seems the city is always dealing with complicated issues, including whether or not to raise taxes and fees. Um, how will you approach these tough choices? I think that when we talk about uh, raising fees or taxes, we always have to come at it from a very balanced approach. Um, we have a lot of homeowners, we have a lot of tenants uh, in the city. And so again, balance is really key. I think we also have to approach the budget and some tough fiscal issues looking at the citywide budget as a whole and not just looking at um, specific uh, sectors or um, issue areas, but we really have to look at the city's financial standing as a whole for the long term. That's really important and that's, that's definitely what drives a lot of my decision making process. And I think it's also tougher in San Francisco because we really are held to a very high standard where we have to balance the budget every single fiscal year. Um, we cannot run, uh, spend into a deficit in the new fiscal year. We cannot print more money. We are held to a very high standard by our um, charter and so I think that that's why these tough decisions are made every year. What other issues do you feel are 
the large issues facing San Francisco. I think for San Francisco and also elsewhere, um, one of the biggest issues right now is really how do we attract economic development and spur job creation. And those are two things that really go hand in hand and really is what makes a city vibrant and a place where people want to live and can't afford to live. And I think that um, keeping those citywide goals in mind really want to try to also make sure that locally uh, we support our small businesses and make sure that um, our local merchants, for example, feel the economic benefits and also um, help create some jobs as well. What are your thoughts on the city's economic development? Do you feel we're on the right track? I think we are in a very exciting time right now in San Francisco where we have a lot of energy um, in terms of businesses and especially the tech industry wanting to locate in San Francisco and that's something that we really haven't seen as much in the past after the dot-com boom and so um, we are in a very exciting time and we really see a transformation going on in, in our city because of that. What would you like to see change about the city's approach to developing its economy? I think that uh, really depends on the changing times and uh, there isn't sort of one solution uh, for uh, the entire city. It really depends on kind of what the dynamics are going on with the economy as a whole in the region um, and not just looking at San Francisco but really as a regional body. Sometimes district issues are different than city issues. What do you feel are some of the biggest issues facing your district? I think that uh, because we have a lot of children, families and seniors um, in our district, you know, they care a lot about um, your quality of life issues, right? And it's the reason why people choose to live there. They wanna make sure that your streets are repaved, that our potholes are filled, that public transportation works for you, that you know your parks and playgrounds are safe for your children to play in, that your students can go to local schools. Um, I think that those are all important issues facing District 4 and will continue to. How will you balance the needs of your district versus the needs of the city as a whole? I think that uh, as district supervisor, we uh, play that balancing act every single day in our jobs and we respond to all of the constituent needs, you know, whether they call us, whether they email us or um, talk to us in person about a problem. We try to sort of bridge the resources that exist in the city and help connect them with uh, whichever department it is that they might need to be connected with um, to resolve their issue. But also at the same time, we are citywide representatives and we vote on legislation every week that impact every everyone in the entire city. And I think that when we take those votes, for example, we keep our district interests in mind and how they might want us to best represent them on citywide issues. You mentioned transportation in Muni earlier. What do you hear about transportation from your district constituents? Is there enough Muni service? I think that especially given the fact that we are, the Sunset District is located so far from the central portion of the city that transportation is difficult for them. And you know, as, as you know, there are some issues with switchbacks, for example, on Muni and uh, folks feeling like, um, you know, they don't have adequate service down to the end of the line. And so I have worked with uh, MTA and we're trying to figure out solutions to address that. But I think overall, um, our residents really just want to make sure that they can get from where they need to go uh, from the Sunset District or back home uh, via public transportation. What about parking and traffic? I think that uh, the Sunset District typically has a little bit more parking than some other districts. Um, certainly there are always pedestrian safety issues that we have to watch out for. Our district has Slope Boulevard, we have Sunset Boulevard, uh, we also have 19th Avenue and Great Highway. Um, and so those are actually state highways that, um, well except for Sunset Boulevard, but the three are, are state highways that run through our district. And so when you have that, um, we have seen some fatalities along some of those corridors. And so we work very closely with um, the state agency, our local agencies, to see what sort of pedestrian improvements can be made um, to help make it more safe for people. So for example, maybe it means um, that we install more pedestrian countdown signals or install sidewalk bulb outs so that we can shorten the distance where for uh, pedestrians to cross the street or lowering of speed limits. So all of those things we try to look at comprehensively throughout the district to make sure that people can uh, travel safely, whether you're a pedestrian, a cyclist, or a driver. Speaking of safety, um, what are your thoughts on how the city is dealing with crime, especially in your district, and how do you think the police department is doing? Well, we work very closely with our, our local police station, which is Terravel uh, Police Station, and uh, we have some very good uh, community groups out there in the sunset. Um, 
they are they have formed um, out of response of concern for public safety in the neighborhood and I think that uh, generally speaking the Sunset District has uh, lower crime levels than many of the other parts of the city however because we are bordering Ocean Beach and Golden Gate Park we do have pockets of, of problem areas and so our neighbors are the first to alert us and the police station uh, when there are issues and the police have um, been very responsive to that. What kind of issues are you having with um, Ocean Beach or uh, Golden Gate Park? Um, I think that because uh, it's so far from the center of the city and because uh, there's so much open space, uh, we do see a lot of encampments in those areas. And so um, some of our neighbors um, express issues with safety and feeling um, safe in their neighborhood. And so they have uh, worked very closely with our Terrell station to make sure that they monitor those regularly. What are your thoughts on the city's economic development? So in terms of economic development, I think that uh, our city is in a very, again, exciting time right now where we are able to attract a lot of businesses who want to locate here in San Francisco. Um, you know, we have seen a recent wave of technology companies that have located here in our downtown core area and it's really transformed our neighborhoods. And I think that um, as we continue to keep drawing uh, talent and those kind of companies that our, our um, city's economic state will continue to grow. Speaking of growth in our city, how do you feel about the role of um, the Warriors coming to San Francisco and the plans for the new stadium? So uh, the Warriors and the plan for the new stadium, um, you know, the project approvals and the environmental review report will actually have to go through the Board of Supervisors, so I'll have to make my decision then. Uh, but the prospect of something like that would be very exciting for the city, I think, not only for as an economic engine, but also in terms of uh, San Francisco's cultural history. To what degree do you feel the city should subsidize the team? Um, I think that uh, negotiations are still to be sorted out and, um, and you know, I think that all of that is in the works, but um, it's something that I'll pay very closely attention to. What would you like the, to see change in the city's approach to developing its economy? You know, I think that San Francisco is a very creative city and we tend to be on the cutting edge of issues, right? And I think that to that extent, uh, our administration and our various departments such as the Office of Economic and Workforce Development have always thought of creative approaches um, that might be new for the region to, for example, attract new businesses or um, you know, other sorts of financing mechanisms and I think that we will continue to do that at San Francisco. Well, are there any other issues that you plan to concentrate on throughout your term as supervisor? Yes, I believe that um, having worked uh, you know, for many years in the District 4 office and now as supervisor, um, over time we have felt that you know, many times we are very reactive to a lot of the problems that, that um, you know, are presented our way. And I want to really make sure that uh, during my term I would love to do some long-term planning for our district to make sure that we think forward um, you know, maybe 5, 10, 15 years out and uh, think ahead um, you know, now and start the planning work and laying the foundation for things that we want to do in the future. What are some of your ideas? Uh, so I will be in engaging in a community uh, process uh, where we focus on some of our key issue areas that we care a lot about in our district um, and working with them to kind of lay out the groundwork for what we envision for our district in the future. Well, we're almost out of time, but it's been great chatting with you. Thank you so much for joining us today on SFGov TV's Meet Your District Supervisor. Thank you for having me. <laughs> We've been talking to Supervisor Tang from District 4. Watch for the next episode of Meet Your District Supervisor when we'll be back with another one of our 11 city supervisors. For SFGov TV, I'm Nona Melkonian.